Please miss Mrs. K. She came to the Clinic of Periodontology in Bern University two and a half years ago. She is 57 years old and healthy. She told me that four years ago she went through an extensive dental treatment involving extractions of all upper and some of the lower teeth, immediate implantation and cemented implant bridge. Mrs. K complained about severe pain. She expressed deep concern about the fate of the implants and stressed that she has a limited budget. In the intraoral examination, we could observe the massive overgrowth around the peri-implant mucosa, and we detected deep probing depths around implants and severe bleeding on probing, and the X-ray presented bone loss around some implants. We diagnosed the patient with chronic periodontitis, peri-implant mucositis, and peri-implantitis. Before getting to our treatment plan, let me jump to the end result of our treatment. Let me just say, it was a happy end. What would you do if your patient presented chronic periodontitis with peri-implant mucositis and peri-implantitis? What kind of treatment would you choose? For treating chronic periodontitis, the treatment of choice is scaling and root planning. This treatment showed in the literature predictable results in probing depths, bleeding on probing reduction, and gaining clinical attachment. But what kind of treatment would you purpose to treat peri-implant diseases? Would you choose titanium curettes alone, plastic one, or would you add adjunctive therapy like systemic antibiotics? Or would you prefer to add local antibiotics? Shall we use powder air polishing? Shall we use photodynamic therapy? What is the right treatment in this situation? In order to get an answer to my dilemma, which treatment protocol is the most efficient for treating peri-implant diseases, I search in PubMed for studies and reviews that might be able to give me a clear answer on this unclear topic. Here are some of the answers I got. Peri-implant mucositis has a cause-effect relationship between plaque accumulation and the development of inflammation. So that means by removing the plaque, we should solve the problem. Well... But it's not so easy. Salvi and Associates 2012 showed reversibility of experimental peri-implant mucositis, but did not always result in complete resolution of inflammation. What about adjunctive antiseptic to mechanical debridement? Conventional non-surgical with adjunctive antiseptic have been suggested to treat the peri-implant diseases. Those adjunctive antiseptic treatments had shown low predictability without complete resolution. So using chloroxidine, iodine, or other antiseptic does not help to resolve the peri-implant mucositis or peri-implantitis. So maybe adjunctive antibiotic will help? Well, the literature shows that adding adjunctive antibiotics to treat the peri-implant diseases showed some small benefit, but also without complete resolution. And moreover, will put the patient in a risk of developing resistance or anaphylactic shock. What about photodynamic therapy? Photodynamic therapy uses the soft laser to bomb the bacterial cells, and it sounds like a good idea. In fact, in 2014, Bassetti and Associates showed improvement in clinical outcomes of initial peri-implantitis using photodynamic therapy, mechanical debridement, and self-performed plaque control, up to 12 months. However, complete resolution of mucosal inflammation was not achieved using this method. So what shall we do? Maybe we shall perform surgery? I wouldn't choose surgery as first choice because recent systematic review concluded there is no reliable evidence suggesting which surgical protocol therapy could be the most effective interventions for treating peri-implantitis. So what else can we use? There was a study conducted by Metro and Associates published in 2015. They have shown that non-surgical mechanical therapy of peri-implantitis with adjunctive repeated application of diode laser yields significant clinical improvement. Actually, when you think about it, diode laser characteristics give us exactly what we need. It is antibacterial, it is anticoagulant, it is biostimulator, and it can penetrate by a thin tip to the deep pocket without hurting the surrounding tissue. Can you please explain a bit about this diode laser protocol that we have used? I have used Metro protocol. 
I first performed mechanical debridement. Then the pockets around the implants were rinsed with saline solution. Adjunctive diode laser was applied three times for 30 seconds in each pocket. This treatment was performed one time a week for three weeks. No antibiotics or antiseptic were applied. Are you curious about the results? In the next pictures, you can observe the healing process after each diode laser application. Those pictures had been taken immediately after the first diode laser treatment. We can observe the massive bleeding and the overgrowth of the gingiva. The next series of pictures present the shrinkage process of the overgrowth peri implant mucosa after each diode laser and curatage application. After 24 months, we can see clearly the results of our treatment. We can see the stability of the healthy peri implant mucosa after diode application. This stability reflects in the absence of bleeding, no more deep probing depths, and no further bone loss. There are some disadvantages of this procedure. can create hot spots on the tip, and that can lead to thermal heat in the soft tissue. Nevertheless, we can control it. It is expensive and the results not always aesthetically pleasing. It is important to understand that we're going to diagnose more and more peri-implant diseases in our clinic. In fact, Dirks and Tomasi showed that the prevalence of peri-implant mucositis and peri-implantitis has been reported as 43% and 22% respectively. And if peri-implantitis left untreated, it will lead to implant loss.